Now let's take our analysis of the cash flow statement one step further and look at free cash flow. And free cash flow really does deserve some of our attention because it's the most important financial metric you can look at to assess the long-term viability of a company. And it's probably the metric that airline CFOs are most concerned with because they know that eventually they must generate positive free cash flow to survive. Remember, it's not lack of earnings, it's not lack of income that push businesses into bankruptcy, it's lack of cash. And any business that doesn't eventually generate positive free cash flow will not be a viable business. So let's take a look at the definition here and let me show you what I mean by that. So the definition we're going to use is free cash flow equals operating cash flow minus capital expenditures. And what that basically means is free cash flow is the money you have left over after you pay your expenses and invest some money back into the business just to keep the business going. So let's look at the two terms here in this in this definition. Operating cash flow, so we saw from the, the uh, cash flow statement, Operating cash flow is the cash you have left over after you pay your operating expenses. So the airline takes in a certain amount of revenue, they pay a certain amount of expenses to operate the airline, and hopefully they have some money left over. Well, then capital expenditures is the money the airline needs to continue investing back into the airline to replace equipment, upgrade equipment, and buy new equipment or property. So, you know, things like uh, it could be ground equipment, it could be maintenance facilities, it could be airplanes, it could be buildings. And the idea here is these are the these are the expenses any business needs to incur just to keep the business going. And if you have money left over after paying these bills, then you can do good things with that extra money. If you don't have enough money to pay for these essential expenses, then you need to get that money from somewhere else and usually that's through debt. So you can see that you know if this number is positive and you have positive free cash flow then you have a business that can go and do a lot of other um, positive things with that money. If you don't have positive free cash flow then you're in a situation where you tend to be incurring more and more debt. So let's take a look at let's just create two columns here. Let me see if my pen's working. Yeah so Let's say an airline with positive free cash flow and a negative with, excuse me, an airline with negative free cash flow. So what are some of the things the airlines would do in these situations? Well, if an airline has positive free cash flow, what are the things it can do with that extra cash? Well, one thing it can do is return some of it to its investors. Return to investors. And the other thing they can do is pay down debt. Pay down debt. So they would be um, you know, rewarding their investors and also shoring up their balance sheet by paying down debt. And if they even have cash left over after doing these things, they can add that cash to their balance sheet and um, you know, further strengthen their, their uh, financial position. An airline that doesn't have positive free cash flow, that has negative free cash flow, is going to need to finance it, its operations by some other means. And it could be equity, uh, but generally it means they're raising debt. Raising debt. So they're borrowing money to pay their bills. Okay, bar, uh, raising debt. Now, certainly, any company would rather be on, on this side of the page than this side of the page. Um, but that doesn't mean when you see an airline with negative free cash flow that it's necessarily a red flag. Airlines in growth mode and airlines that are at the early stages of their development, you wouldn't expect them to have positive free cash flow. So suppose you have a new airline that's only been in business for a few years. Well, the airline, airline industry is so capital intensive that it would be reasonable to expect that they could fund all of their investments through the cash that's being produced by a small operation. They have to fund their growth through debt, and that's perfectly reasonable. But eventually, they must get over to positive free cash flow, 
because if they don't what will happen is they'll just continue to borrow and borrow and borrow to pay their bills and at some point they will collapse under the weight of that debt they won't be able to meet their obligations um, and continue to borrow uh, to grow their business and this is what happens in airline bankruptcies um, quite commonly is that airlines get so encumbered by their debt that they don't see a way out that they they will never get the free cash flow and the only way out of that situation is by filing for bankruptcy now we're going to take a look at a couple of airlines and see a couple of scenarios of uh, free cash flow so we'll start with Southwest Airlines let me go find that cash flow statement so we'll start with Southwest Airlines because that's the airline we've been using as our example all along uh, but you know Southwest is such a darn healthy company that some of the more interesting scenarios are hard to find in their uh, financial documents so I have a couple others to show you but let's start with Southwest we've been looking at this first quarter of 2013 so let's see what their free cash flow is well we said free cash flow is operating cash flow which is this line right here cash from operations and in the first quarter of 2013 they generated 983 million dollars from their operations so that's the first term in the equation then we look for capital expenditures and they call it payments for uh, property and equipment and we can see right away that they invested 534 million dollars back into the airline to upgrade upgrade equipment and buy new equipment and the cash that they are generating from their operation is more than enough to cover the investments they need to make back into the airline so it looks like something like 400 million dollars is left over after paying that expense so they have free cash flow something in excess of 400 million dollars well when we in the um, in the introduction we said airlines with free cash flow can do all sorts of good things so let's see if we can find out what they did with that cash let's see if I'm gonna scroll here uh, let me go a little bit further and let's see if we can find debt so here's their payment on long-term debt so it looks like they're using some of that cash to pay down debt and shore up their balance sheet and they've done that consistently for these four quarters uh, payment of cash dividends so they're returning some of that cash to their investors in the form of dividends and uh, stock repurchase so they're they're buying back some common stock so a uh, really nice position for an airline to be in to be able to do all these things with free cash flow they're paying down debt they're returning money to their investors and remember from the the video on cash flow statements they even after doing all that they had 225 million dollars left over and they added that to their cash balance on their balance sheet so really good story for Southwest Airlines uh, they have a long history of a healthy uh, cash flow and balance sheet so um, you know this is sort of the ideal uh, version of an airline cash flow statement let's take a look at some other examples this example is JetBlue Airways I went and found their annual report from 2007 and they have a summary of some financial data here for 2007 and the previous four years so 2003 to, through 2007 the reason I chose JetBlue because is because in terms of financial maturity JetBlue is a very different airline from Southwest Southwest has been around for a long time and has been uh, consistently profitable JetBlue particularly back in 2003 was a very new airline they only started operating in the year 2000 so it wouldn't be reasonable to expect JetBlue <coughs> to be uh, generating the kind of cash flow that Southwest is the unique thing about JetBlue though is early in their history they started generating positive net income so we can't see it here but even in the year 2000 the year they started the airline they generated positive income and they did that through 2004 and then in 2005 and 2006 fuel spiked and they lost some money but back in 
in 2007, they started generating positive income again. So a real success story for a new airline to be earning money in its early years. But by looking at this, we don't know anything about what's happening to cash. So let's take a look at their cash flow statement. Let me go find that. So here's their cash flow statement, at least for three of those years, and we can see the uh, the net income up here. Let's take a look at their uh, free cash flow. So here's their operating cash. So they were generating positive cash from their operation. But when we look at capital expenditures, expenditures we can see that the cash they're generating is not nearly enough to fund their investments back into the airline, and that would be expected. So. Uh, you know, in 2005, they generated $170 million in cash, but they needed $917 million to invest back into the airline uh, to upgrade their equipment and so forth. So we said airlines that have negative free cash flow need to fund those investments from some other place. So let's uh, page down here and see if we can find where JetBlue is getting their money. Uh, so it looks like they're raising some cash from issuing stock and some cash from issuing uh, long-term debt. So clearly they have negative free cash flow. They're raising funds through equity and debt. And let's see uh, cash. So here's an interesting thing, increase and decrease in cash. So here in 2007, they actually added $108 million to their cash balance on their balance sheet. Well, that's a whole lot different. So they're adding that cash. They got that cash by borrowing it. It's a much different story from Southwest, where they were adding cash to their balance sheet because they had so much free cash flow that they had money left uh, after they paid all their bills. But the point I want to make here is these are two very different free cash flow situations. But you wouldn't want to conclude that JetBlue is in trouble just because they're in a uh, they have a different cash flow than Southwest. They're in a much different stage of their uh, development of the airline. And in fact, uh, if you were to look, I, I didn't bother pulling them up, but in 2000, I forget, maybe it was 2009, JetBlue started achieving positive free cash flow, and this is 2014. They are consistently uh, producing uh, positive free cash flow, and you would expect an airline that's 13 years old to be in a different situation than an airline that's you know, three, four, five, six, seven years old. So you need to know you need to know the business that you are examining before you make any conclusions. Let's look at one other example, and that's American Airlines just before they declared bankruptcy. So here's AMR's cash flow statement for 2011 and these three years. They declared bankruptcy. They filed in 2011, so this is just leading up to their uh, bankruptcy filing. And first, you can see their net income was, um, you know, quite quite low here. It was in the negative numbers. They were, if you look at, so let's look at their free cash flow. They were generating some positive cash from their operation. But when you look at their capital expenditures here, it wasn't nearly enough to cover their capital expenditures. So they have negative free cash flow. Uh, so let's see if we can find where they're getting their money from if they're not getting it from cash. I'll stand by a second. So in this section on their cash flow statement, we can see they were actually paying down some debt while they're also raising debt. But the net looks like they're they're not actually incurring a lot more debt. So where are they getting their money from? Well, part of it looks like here are these sale leaseback transactions. So this could be that they're taking some assets, maybe airplanes, selling those assets, getting the cash, and then leasing them back, um, and then getting some cash that way. And here, interestingly, they're actually they're actually adding to their cash balance on the balance sheet, but it's not coming from free cash flow. So uh, again, when you're looking at balance sheet cash balances, you want to just make sure you understand where that money is coming from. The interesting thing about their balance sheet, let me go find that. So you can see on their balance sheet, you know, just before they declared bankruptcy, they had about $4 billion in cash. So it's interesting to look at an airline that has $4 billion in cash, but still has a need to file bankruptcy to get protection from their creditors because they had no free cash flow. So they had plenty of 
you know, plenty of cash, but they had no earnings and no free cash flow. And as we started the videos, airlines that don't generate positive free cash flow are not viable in the long term. And that's why AMR filed for bankruptcy and why uh, most airlines file for bankruptcy.